Welcome to We Are Hospitality, a podcast from the Rhode Island Hospitality Association with your host, me, Bill Bartholomew. So we are here with Farouk Rajab this Friday morning and a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us here on We Are Hospitality. Hey, Bill. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Glad the sun is shining. Things are shifting as far as the Governor McKee's um, and, and the state's restrictions. We're kind of moving into a better place, obviously, with the COVID numbers. Well, let's get into sort of your experience as general manager of one of Providence's signature hotels. Can you sort of tell us what it's been like trying to operate a hotel in the middle of a major pandemic? Uh, That's a tough one. You know, it's because it started with, you know, it it was surprising, uh, although there were many indicators coming from China uh, about you know, the, the pandemic starting there and, and then uh, seeing hotels impacted there, uh, talking to friends. But when it came to uh, to our shores, you know, we, we, we had to, uh, you know, change our model dramatically quickly, uh, but keeping the faith that there will be a better tomorrow for hoteliers. So, you know, our, our main focus was health of our associate, the health of our visitors. And, uh, you know, we, we shifted quickly. Uh, restaurants were closed. Um, you know, we were very sensitive to the uh, hygiene of the hotel. Uh, and, you know, we focused on being resilient and uh, anchoring ourselves down so we can have a better tomorrow. Can you talk about some of those safeguards for both your employees and, of course, the hotel guests once they start to return or started to return? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, we 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 published uh, a thirty-nine page commitment to clean plan. Uh, that's what we called it. Uh, that focused on uh, our associate first safety. You know, we focused on providing our associate with the uh, protective equipment they need to do their job safely. Uh, and with the, with the belief that if we can keep our associates safe, we can keep our guests safe, right? So uh, we wanted to um, go about it that way. And, it, you know, as, as a company, that was always our firm belief is to take care of your associate and they take care of the guest. Uh, so we adopted the same uh, belief into uh, the safety and health of our uh, guests by keeping our associates safe and healthy. Uh, so we had a we had a commitment to clean plan that detailed everything from uh, protective equipment uh, to the signage to doors to entrance to cleaning. You know we we invested in, in what uh, something called electrostatic sprayers that we use uh, a regular basis in in high touch area to keep everything sanitized. Uh, we uh, we also provided our associates in uh, on demand testing. Uh, Capabilities, so they're always tested. They're always um, feeling safe about themselves, um, and we we fought on a national level really to to advocate uh, the advancement and prioritizing the hotel workers uh, for vaccination. You know, we, we're still, uh, I believe, behind on that, and to, on a national level, on a state level. Um, but you know, we've we've advocated uh, with uh, with uh, both. Uh, Governor Romando and Governor McKee on, you know, prioritizing hotel workers and restaurant workers to be vaccinated first, because if if they're safe, the public is safe. When it comes to the meetings and convention business, it's a significant revenue generator for our entire state's economy. Do you see this business and the travel associated with it coming back and what will be different when it does? Uh, it, it will come back. You know, I, I'm an optimist. Okay. So I, I believe it will come back and it will come back uh, soon. I, I, soon is not this year, um, you know, uh, but the convention center is still closed. Uh, as long as that convention center is closed, you know, there's, the, you know, the, the traveler uh, or the, the agencies or the businesses that book conventions and meetings, um, they're not confident in when we're going to open the convention center. So they're not going to book anything. So, right. So until that convention center is open, I am, I am, uh, I'm a, I believe in the, uh, in the team at the Providence Warwick Conventions Visitor Bureau who uh, 
sells uh, events and conventions in our city. I believe they're the best of the best and they will do a great work the minute we have our convention center back. And before we really uh, have a firm date uh, on, on the return of the convention center uh, in, in a sellable condition, um, we can't really predict or project, you know, an opening, right? Or business travel coming back and, and, and convention business. You know, b b business travel is also, you know, the individual companies that, that halted travel. Um, and those companies still like, they're still holding back on travel. So conventions business, I, I don't think we'll see anything, unfortunately, Bill, until uh, 2022. Uh, individual business travel, we might see some at the end of this year uh, and some return to normalcy in 2022, uh, but not, we're not going to, you know, come back to 2019 levels uh, anytime soon. I, I, you know, best, best case scenario in my mind is 2024. 2024. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're also the chairman of the board of the Rhode Island Hospitality Association. Your industry was hit hard by this pandemic, that's no secret. What is it like having to step into a leadership role on behalf of the entire industry when you're trying to protect your own property? It's two hats that overlap in the Venn diagram, but boy, you know, that's two separate tracks that could be all encompassing. Each and of the, each one could be all encompassing on its own, I, su I should say. They are, they are all encompassing on their own, but they're uh, two of the same in my mind because it's, it's, yeah. it's, it was the fight of a lifetime, right? You, you had, you had, you had to fight like if your life depended on it because it did, it did, it did depend on it because, you know, losing, losing my business was not an option for me and uh, protecting it and protecting the entire industry was uh, paramount of every, everything I thought of. of. Uh, I went to bed thinking about it, woke up thinking about it. Um, you know, I've, uh, it, it was hard because we've never experienced it before. So we really didn't know what to do, at, at, you know, and we had to learn as we went. We still don't know a lot about this uh, and, and we still try to learn every day. Uh, but, you know, it, it was an incredible journey. I think I could have not asked for a better partner uh, then Dale, Heather, Sarah, the entire uh, Reha team uh, to go through this and to uh, help uh, the industry survive and thrive. On that note, last question, thinking back one year ago, and boy, is it pretty much just one year ago today that it was becoming more and more clear that this was going to be a pretty serious event, no doubt about it. But what are you most proud of? You know, Bill, it's, it's, that's a tough question to ask a, a dad, you know, <laughs> what you're proud of it is always your, your children first, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah, uh, absolutely. But um, my industry peers, you know, working with every single one of them, I am proud of calling them friends, brothers, sisters. Uh, they've been uh, resilient. They've been fighters. Uh, they've innovators. Uh, they've done... Uh, things that they didn't think themselves they can do. Uh, they survived uh, pandemic. They survived uh, the test of all tests. Um, you know, so they've the, my my industry peers, my coworkers here at the hotel uh, have been uh, tremendous. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, experience and pride to me. So. I'm, I'm very proud of them and I'm very appreciative of having them in my life. 